Michelle. I'm a 3D designer at Clo Virtual Fashion, and I'm gonna give you a demonstration on how to use our fabric kit. So by the end of this video, you should completely understand how to digitize your own fabric and start building your own fabric library. So first we're gonna identify all of the parts that come with our kit. So first you'll have received um, a black box and inside of this black box, these are the things that you will have. So you'll have a folder that has written directions that you can also follow to use your fabric kit. You'll have a black stencil that will help you trace your swatches. You'll have a rotary cutter to cut the fabric. You will have two markers to mark out the fabric using the stencil. You'll have a digital scale, a digital thickness gauge, a screwdriver, a bend test device, two fabric beds, a short fabric bed and a long fabric bed, a stretch test device, and a digital force gauge. And along with that comes a charger for your digital force gauge. Now I'm gonna show you how to assemble your digital force gauge. Your, this will come with the pieces separate and it will require some assembly. So first you're gonna take the digital force gauge and turn it to the back and there's a metal plate that you're gonna, has four holes in it and the force gauge has four holes on the back side. You're gonna have to align this plate over those four holes like so. And you're gonna have a set of screws with this. So you can just take these screws using your hand, kind of just nestle them in there. And once you get them all placed, there's a screwdriver that will help you fully, uh, fully screw these in to attach these two pieces together. So this is part one of the digital force gauge assembly. And then after you've screwed this in, you will have a vice, like a vice clamp almost, that you want to attach to the front of your force gauge. So you'll see um, a thread sticking out and you'll there's a, a hole to put that on and you'll just turn this. The key with this is that you do not want to fully screw this on so it's completely taut. You basically wanna turn this until you do hit the tightest point, and then you wanna turn back one to keep this loose and free a little bit, and you want this knob to be upright towards the top side of your digital force gauge. And then once you've assembled this part, you are now gonna, now we're gonna attach this to the stretch test, stretch test device, so you're gonna pull this over there's a ruler, a ruler on one side. You want the ruler facing towards you and you can place this down. You're first gonna take the long fabric bed and it, there are some slots that you can just slide this right into. So you wanna place this first before you are gonna put your digital force gauge into, there's a bed over here. So place that, then you can place this into the bed and you wanna push this so it's completely taut against your fabric bed. Once that's taut there, you can, there are screw placements over here on each side of the digital force gauge where you can now completely attach, attach this device to your stretch test. This assembly only needs to happen one time. Uh, once you receive your kit, you have to put this all together and then after that, uh, you'll, you should never have to do this again. Let me just screw that in here. Great. You will have some leftover screws. They're kind of just in case screws. And so once this is assembled, now you're, um, you're good to start digitizing your own fabric. I'm gonna explain how to prepare your fabrics before you use the fabric testing kit. So for this, you're gonna need uh, your stencil, one of the markers, your rotary cutter, and you will need a piece of fabric that's larger than your stencil. Ideally, you wanna have part of your selvage attached to the part of your fabric so you can easily identify what is straight grain and what is warp, warp and weft and bias. So I have part of my selvage here and I'm going to place my stencil following the edge of my selvage. And using my marker, I'm basically going to just follow the edges of this stencil to mark out the different directions of my fabric. 
So there are, uh, there's large rectangles and small rectangles that you do want to outline both of these areas of the stencil. So the other important part before you remove your stencil is that you want to identify which pieces are the warp, weft, and bias. So I'm going to uh, write, and I can draw an arrow, and I'm going to write warp, Mark my bias strip, and then my weft strip. So then once you've drawn that all out, you can remove your stencil. And now you're actually gonna use the edge of this as a ruler to cleanly cut these rectangles out. Um, one of the additional parts that I'm using that does not come with the kit is a mat board. So you can get this, it'll help you um, with the rotary cutter to cut your pieces out. So basically I'm just going to use the hard metal edge and place it where I drew my marker, open up my rotary cutter and cut my pieces out. So you want to make sure that you're holding the stencil down with enough pressure so that you don't slip and accidentally cut yourself. Okay, so once you've cut those all out, you can remove these. Um, one thing I want to point is that, that the size of this stencil actually matches the size of the flat bed of your, the long flat bed of your stretch test kit. So if you do want to use the shorter flat bed, if you have a smaller swatch, you can use the stencil for the length, but for the width, you're going to have to cut manually. Okay, so once you've cut all your pieces out, you'll have three swatches, one for your warp, one for your weft, and one for your bias. And now you're ready to move on to using the actual devices to measure all of the properties of your fabrics. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it with the preparation. Now you're gonna use the swatches that you cut to measure their weight and thickness. So you can take the three swatches and just lay them on top of each other. And now you want to turn your scale on. So there's an on button, just hit that, wait for it to zero out. And to measure these on the scale, you do just want to fold them up. So you can just neatly roll them up together and place them onto your scale. And you're going to read the number. So I'm going to record 4.51. And that's it for weighing them. And then you're just gonna now take one of these swatches and turn on your uh, digital thickness gauge so there's an on button. So once that's at zero, you can now pull this metal lever down. You're just gonna use one of your swatches for this, just slip it into this opening, release that, and record the thickness of your fabric. So mine's at 0.68 millimeters, so I'm just gonna record that so I can enter this into the emulator at a later time. And that's it for measuring the weight and thickness. The next step of the fabric testing kit is the bend test. So for the bend test, you only need your warp and weft swatch. So you can take your bias swatch and just move it to the side. You do not need that for this part. So the bend test device, so you're gonna pull this section of the device open and this has a hinge, this area has a hinge that you can turn up. So you're gonna take your, uh, one of your swatches and slide it into, there's like a canal that you can just basically slide this into and make sure it hits the edge here and then you just turn this area back down. So you're gonna put the hinge down. So there's a roller here that's gonna help you slide and roll your fabric forward. So the point of this test is to push this out to roll this outward and you want to record the number that this fabric when it hits the ruler. So I'm going to roll this out until I see exactly where now it's made contact with the ruler and I can record this number. So for me it has hit uh, 12 millimeters. So that is your contact distance. So you can record that number first. Once it's hit this ruler, what you want to do is lift this little part of the fabric up and actually push this back and let that set on this ruler. And now you're gonna record your contact length 
Uh, so for me, I have 27. So you want to record those two numbers. Um, so you're going to do that for the weft and the warp piece. So then I'm going to, once I'm done recording those numbers, I can op slide that open, pull my swatch out. Now I'm going to put my warp piece in. So same thing. There's a canal that you can slide it into. Um, for this, it does not matter if you do face up or face down. Right, so place that fabric in here and start rolling this forward. So we'll see where that hits on the ruler. If you get a scenario where your knit rolls under, some knits roll under a lot, the edge, um, what you can do instead is actually push it out more than you need and roll this backwards and watch where this, like see the measurement at which this lifts off of the ruler. So this has a little bit of roll so I can do that method and I see that this is now lifted up when I hit 15 millimeters. So for my contact distance, I'm gonna write 15, lift this little section up, push that in and now record my contact length of 29. And that's it for the bend test. So next we are going to move on to the stretch test part of the fabric testing kit. So the stretch test will allow us to test the stretchability of the fabric and the threshold at which it stops stretching. To do this, we're going to explore the relationship between length of stretch and force applied. The reading from the digital force gauge combined with the reading from the length ruler will give you one set of measurements. For every swatch, you are going to need a minimum of three sets and a maximum of five sets of these numbers together. So first, I'm going to just call out the parts of the stretch test so we know what we're talking about. So this device over here is called the digital force gauge. It basically reads how much force is being applied to the fabric. In the center here, we have the fabric bed. Um, it just guides you to keep the fabric flat and align it into these grips at the each end. And over here, we have a knob that you will be turning to move one of the vice grips forward and away from the fabric bed. And on the back side, which should be facing towards you while you're doing this, is our length ruler. So when you begin, you want to make sure that this knob and the needle is all the way at the zero point on the length ruler and that the digital force gauge is completely off. So first thing you're going to do is unscrew these clamps until there's space so we can insert the fabric ends into this area. So you're just going to take one of your swatches. It does not matter whether the face or the back is facing upward or downward. It, any direction is fine. And when we cut these out in our stencil, there was a line marked inward on the end of the fabric. You want to insert this end into the second line, the line that is further into the fabric. That's the correct marking for the area that should go into this, these clamps. So you can just place that flat down, make sure there's no wrinkles, no buckling, and then close your clamps. Now we're ready to turn on our digital force gauge and start moving our ruler to record our measurements. One thing I want to explain is the set of buttons that is on the digital force gauge. For your purposes, the only button that concerns you is the power button. You will not be hitting any of the other buttons on this throughout your stretch test. So you will only be turning the power button on when you begin the test and off when you finish the test. The digital force gauge sometimes jumps around a little bit. The number takes a moment to stabilize and sometimes it doesn't fully stabilize. It may jump up and down between a range of three or four numbers. Um, the two options that you have is just be patient, wait for it to stabilize. Another thing that can affect it is any movement on the actual table that you're working on. Once I lifted my elbows up off the table, now this is stabilized at 0 0.020. If it does not stabilize, just pick the number that's somewhere in the range of the area that you see it moving in. And that will be sufficient for the measurements of your recording. 
First, we need to determine what unit of length we'll, we will be using as our constant. The reason we need to do this is because this device has a threshold reading of two kilograms of force. After that, it really cannot read how much force is being applied. So in general, high stretch fabrics will reach this threshold at a slower pace. So we can move our length ruler in larger increments. And on the other side, generally, low stretch fabrics will reach this threshold at a quicker pace. So we need to move in smaller increments. So first I'm gonna demonstrate scenario one of kind of how you would do this with a high stretch fabric. It's pretty, pretty common scenario. So first we're going to turn on your digital force gauge. Your needle should be at zero at your length ruler. And what you're gonna do is on the very far right, you're gonna start turning this knob and you just wanna watch the number on your digital force gauge until you see that this has hit 0 0.010. Now the digital force gauge is can be a little jumpy sometimes. It takes a minute to stabilize. So it doesn't, if it's just around 0 0.010, if it's 0 0.01213, you just wanna stop when you've hit that number. So mine is at 0 0.012, so I know it's above, slightly above 0 0.010. And first thing you wanna do next is look at the where the needle is hitting on your length ruler. If the needle is above one millimeter, you are going to use this first length recording and this number on your digital force gauge as your first set of measurements. So mine is at six millimeters and the digital force gauge is reading 0 0.012. So that's set number one. Again, for every swatch, you're gonna do a minimum of three sets and a maximum of five. You always wanna do as many sets as the fabric allows. So if your fabric can do five, you should do all five. So then after this first set of measurements, you're now gonna only move in one centimeter increments. So I'm gonna now turn my knob until I hit 12 millimeters. And that is now my second set of measurements. So with 12 millimeters, my digital force gauge is reading 0 0.024. Okay, and now I'm gonna do this three more times. So now at 18 millimeters, I am at 0 0.033. Okay, next is move to 24. So at 24 millimeters, I'm at 0 0.050. And one last time until we're at 30. So at 30 millimeters, I'm at 0 0.062. So once you've recorded that three or five sets, you're now done testing that swatch. Now you wanna reset this device before you move on to the next swatch. So what you're gonna do is turn this knob at the end until the needle is all the way back at zero bring that back and you want to turn your, your digital force gauge off. So I'm going to hit the power button and shut this off completely. Now unscrew these clamps to remove our swatch. So that's the process for, for high stretch fabrics. So the next scenario that I want to demonstrate is how you use the stretch test device with a low stretch fabric. So this is basically wovens or anything that doesn't stretch a lot. Um, so the initial process is kind of the same. You want the needle to be at zero. You want the digital force gauge to be off. You're gonna unscrew your clamps, place your swatch in the fabric bed and insert the ends to the second line marking on your swatch. Okay, once that's in there, you can close these. And now you're gonna turn the digital force gauge on. 
Now the initial process is the same as for all swatches. I'm gonna move my knob at the end and watch the digital force gauge until this is hitting at 0 0.010 or above. So I've moved this to one millimeter and I'm at 0 0.063. So it's reaching the threshold of this device much faster because the fabric doesn't stretch and a lot of force is being, being exerted on it. So my first reading is gonna be this first set of measurements of one millimeter at my length ruler and this is stabilizing at 0 0.055. For the next four sets, you're only gonna move one millimeter at a time. So I'm gonna move my needle to two millimeters and see what the reading on my digital force gauge is. And I'm at 0 0.074. I'm gonna move to three millimeters. At three millimeters, I'm at 0 0.095. I'm gonna continue now for the next two. So at four millimeters, I'm at already at 0 0.107. And now we're gonna to move to five millimeters. So at five millimeters, I've hit 0.14. So the other thing that you can tell with this is this swatch, which is woven, is now reaching its threshold of stretchability. So the numbers are no longer having as big jumps in increments. And, and we're done testing this woven swatch. So that is gonna be the general scenario for very low stretch fabrics. Another thing I wanna point out is that wovens, when cut on the bias, may have a lot of stretch. So even though it's a woven when it's on the bias, you still be, might be using the method that applies to high stretch fabrics. So to reset this device for a low stretch fabric, you're gonna move your knob t all the way until your needle is back at zero, turn the digital force gauge off, and then you can remove your swatch. So with this set of numbers, you will now enter them into the emulator mode of Clo, and that will help you create a digital version of your fabric. Once again, I'm Michelle, and if you have any further questions, you can reach out to us at any time. Once you have completed using the fabric testing kit, you are ready to move on to emulator mode of Clo. To access emulator mode, you will first open Clo, and in the top right corner, you will have a drop down menu to allow you to change modes. Click on the arrow on the right, and you will see emulator towards the bottom. Select emulator. This warning that pops up is just letting you know that any projects you have open will close. So we advise to save anything that you may be working on before you change to emulator mode. This first page is giving you an overview of the parts of the fabric kit and the steps you need to take in order to test your fabric. There's nothing to fill in here. You'll simply hit next at the bottom right corner. This next page will ask you to fill out a name for your fabric and select the type of fabric. So here where it says name, you can fill out the name you would like to call your fabric. And below you will select the type of fabric. So in this dropdown, you will have options for knit, woven, and leather. Choose the appropriate fabric to match the fabric that you've tested. Once you fill that out, you can hit next at the bottom right corner. The following page is asking you to confirm the size of the stencil that was used. If you use the default stencil that was provided with the full length, there's nothing to change here. The default size is 220 millimeters by 30 millimeters. If you had to use a smaller swatch, which would have been half the length of the stencil provided, you will click on this drop down and choose 120 by 30. Once you've identified what size swatch you used, you can hit next at the bottom right corner. As you move through the following steps, you will be asked to enter the information that you recorded throughout the fabric testing kit. Just note that the order that you will be asked to enter the information will match the order that you should have tested your swatches. 
So the first information that you will enter is the weight that you recorded, followed by the thickness that you recorded using the digital thickness gauge. After that's all filled out, you can hit next at the bottom right corner. Step three will be asking you to fill out the information from the bend test. Just make sure that you are entering the information for the correct swatch. Here it shows that first you will enter the weft information. Once you've entered that, you can hit next, followed by entering the warp information. And then you can hit next. Step four is where you will fill out the information that you recorded during the stretch test. For each swatch, we are required to test the stretch a minimum of three times and a maximum of five times. So in this window, you will have five spaces to enter the information that you might have recorded throughout this test. So first, you are going to enter the information from the weft stretch test. So here you will enter the length and force recordings that you have. Once you've filled out this information, you can hit next at the bottom right corner. Second, you will fill out the warp information from the stretch test. Then you can hit next once that's all entered. And last, you will enter the bias information from the stretch test. Once that information is entered, you can hit next at the bottom right corner. Step five is the review page. It will give you an opportunity to double check all the information that you typed in and make sure that it matches the information that you wrote down throughout the test. It's very important that you double check this information to make sure there were no typos. If you do notice any mistakes, you can simply click in these boxes and retype the information. You do not have to go back several steps to make any updates. Once that's all set, you can hit compute at the bottom right corner. Once the program is finished, it will confirm that calculation is complete and you can hit next at the bottom right corner. Step number six will give you the opportunity to pair a texture image with your fabric while you are creating it. If you do not want to pair an image at this time, you do not have to, it is not required. But if you do have your texture image, you can click this plus sign, navigate to your image, choose open file, and then you can hit save fabric. Then it will prompt you to save your fabric somewhere on your computer. You can name that. It's going to create a ZFab file. A ZFab file is a clove proprietary fabric file. Once you've typed the name in, you can hit save, and it will confirm that your fabric file has been saved. You can hit OK, and that completes the steps needed in emulator mode. Now to exit emulator mode, you will go back to the top right corner where you can switch modes, choose the drop down, and switch back to simulation mode. Once you have completed your fabric file, you may want to apply this to a project that you have been working on. So here, for example, I have a project open and I want to apply my fabric. So I'm going to extend my library. And here I have the ZFab file that I created in emulator mode. So I'm going to take this file and drag and drop it over the default fabric. And you should see the drape change and adjust to the new fabric properties that you have tested. That concludes our demonstration of emulator mode of Clo.